Nobody gets here by mistake. You could work in a bar forever and believe in random chaos. Entropic drifters pushing through saloon doors, a shower of human asteroids. You might end believing in fatalism or in some great invisible magnet, a spinning force driven in the dank dark. I grew up in Ohio and came to New York uh, after I graduated from college. The first night I was in New York, I. I came here with a couple other fellows that were staying at a youth hostel, and I got drunk here the uh, first night in New York. So little did I know, but uh, this was going to be my home. I got an apartment upstairs. A guy I knew had an apartment up here, and he was uh, actually that guy was going off to Vietnam, and so I took the place in January 1970. In June of 72, I began working here. They needed somebody to fill in. So I started working here, working here part-time. Uh, I went to grad school at City College in the writing program. Uh, I worked with Anthony Burgess and then Kurt Vonnegut for the two years I was in the program. And they, they had great people there. Joe Heller was there, uh, Adrian Rich, who just passed away recently. I couldn't get a grip on a novel about the place. So I ended up uh, starting to write poems about it, but I didn't really work on them that hard until the late 90s. I started to really pull it together. I would stay in here at night when just there would be a night watchman here, but I'd stay here and sit here and look at the things on the walls. You sort of open yourself up. Uh, that's where the poetry be begins. The, the writing of it is something else. There's two things in here. It's the people, and if they're not talking to people, then they're looking at the walls and they want to see what, what are things. But what do the things really represent? Things are really have to do with life and people, too. When you pause and you look around and you realize you're, in the, you're where people stood 150 years ago, you know, Melville was here. He was drinking at this bar. The 20th Century Limited was a train. Poets, playwrights, and painters, cops and firemen and Pinkerton guys, ailmen, and radio joes and TV yokels, veterans, and spies next to barbers and bellhops. Baseball players, boxers, and promoters. Through world wars and depressions and memory, they told stories to make you laugh and weep. The magnet word, and in they came. I actually was going to go back to school for hotel management, but when my father died, and a couple times things like that conspired against me changing. I went back to grad school and took education classes I was going to teach. That was in the late 80s. And then my wife got cancer and I couldn't, I couldn't switch at that point. You sort of realize you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, you do what you have to do, whatever way you want to look at it. Painters and writers of obscure prominence. City workers with Midas pensions. Bus drivers, librarians electricians and welders, heroes, nut jobs, nurses, and teachers. I want my, my poetry to transcend just the bar. Even though it's about the bar, it's also about humanity and people and what they go through in life. The juxtaposition of high life and low life here is, uh, it really, for me, it, it really is, is where it's at. The incongruency of, of things that shouldn't work, work. You know, if you want to sit down, you've got to sit with other people. And then you start talking, and that's when you get the transvestites talking to the tourists from Oklahoma. And they realize they're not so different, you know, after all. They may look different, but uh, that's, you know, that's McSorley's. Seen from uh, the long view lens of 40 years working in a place, people are way too self-conscious. They shouldn't worry so much about, uh, about the superficial things. It's just not worth the waste of energy. You worry about loving somebody and caring for your family or whoever you really, really care about. But it's the people. It's always the, it always comes back to the people. I mean, with no people, no place. Look around, get drunk, tell a tale then disappear back into the world. The clay of their words, the muck of the bar, the force driving the field.